Hi, it's Kelly at Book and Paper Arts. And now that the weather's getting nicer, I have started working in a new illustrated journal. But I'm not ready. It's, it's, it's pretty boring at this point. I thought instead I would do a flip through of a completed travel sketchbook and maybe give some ideas about some techniques. A good way to start your page, if uh, your book, if you're a little anxious about the, the the blank the blank book, and who isn't, is just draw your art supplies, draw your travel art kit. Uh, if you're curious about what is actually in this travel art kit, I have a video about that, and there's a link to it below in the text. Here is guess what? That's a pizza. I wanted to make the page a little more interesting, so this was the napkin that was on the table. It had these, you know, little food icon thingies, so I just tore that, rough tore it, glued it in, and then painted over it. It's just a happy mess. This is in Barcelona, and I love to draw in churches. Churches have history and art and architecture and energy and stories of the people. They're really special. So this was actually a, a floor plate that was made by a guild of, of, of tailors. So it has the scissors. It was really cool. Here's an example of a page that you can make if you don't draw or don't draw well. This was from, we took a tour and this was a brochure and it opens up. So I just glued one panel down and now I can pull that out and enjoy the pretty pictures. A lot of it, the, 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 the thing was in blue. So I've added some blue, just a wash, very simple. And then my notes. I did draw here, but again, I would like to point out that this is hardly fine art, and I'm pretty sure most of you can manage to draw a beverage and a badly executed ice cube and then write some notes about that day and your company. This I cut out from a free brochure of a concert I went to, and then around her I added just some watercolor wash and um, a little bit of brushwork, just really just doing this blah, 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 to make, make it pretty. This was another church in Perpignan, and uh, this is an 11th century baptistry. It's bigger than my car. Here is another brochure that I have glued down at the back and then I can still open and enjoy what was in there. Here's an example of a, a strategy for trying to keep caught up. I've added a grid. It's just eight squares. And then if I, I kind of get behind, I can just add at the end of the day or the beginning of the day, just a little thumbnail, the tiniest little landscape in the world there and then write some notes. And it will still bring back a lot of memories. Here's a pocket. It's just an envelope that I glued in, added a little stamping to make it fun. And now I have a place to put my ticket stubs and whatnot. This is from a church, a priory in Sarabon in France, and they have a lot of columns and chapetiers made out of uh, pink marble. And I wish I could live there. One of the conflicts for someone who likes to keep a, a travel journal is do you draw your food when it comes out and it's really pretty, but it's hot and you would like to enjoy it? Or do you just eat it and miss the opportunity to draw it? My solution is to draw the bread basket while you're waiting 
and then then you can just write about the delicious food that you ate and enjoyed like a normal person. Ticket stub. This was going to be a proper page, but I really was not happy with any of these sketches. So I've just kind of used this, just decided to lean into it. And if I have to sketch something I'm scared of, I just put it on here. This is when I went to tea for my birthday. It was great. This was a trip to the British Museum. Now, let's see. I did up my drawing game a little bit here, but I want to point out that I deliberately chose things to represent that were kind of rough in the first place. So if my drawing looks a little rough, I can say, well, that's the way the statue looked. You know, just, I meant to do that. This is, when I start a new sketchbook, uh, again, the white pages can be intimidating. So I like to go throughout and add coffee and tea with a mister or just blotches. And that way, when you get started drawing, you're going to just draw right over it or work into it. And see, I just completely ignored it, started working, and it still adds some interest and texture to the page. I forgot to add the words. This uh, clearly was an exhibition about Frida Kahlo at the V&A. And uh, I wasn't about to try to do a portrait of this lady. So uh, this is from the brochure. I cut that out and glued that in. And then I made a pocket over here because I bought a boatload of postcards. And now I can put those in there and then take them out and enjoy them. Well, that was from a little, I went shopping. Just added that for a little collage stuff. My church towers pretty much all seem to list, and I have come to accept that. Over here, I've made another pocket. And that means that I don't have to glue my postcards down. I can still read what's on the back. This is just an itinerary that we used when traveling. And it's not very sexy, but it actually really does conjure up what we were doing and when. And so there it is. Another little mini grid. I also find that if I'm doing something I'm not comfortable with, like architecture and buildings, if I just make a little box for a thumbnail, that's all I got to fill in. And I can do that. I don't have to fill a whole page or a canvas. So there's your hack. Ah, there we go. Another grid. And in spite of the fact that they are supposed to keep you caught up, I, I got behind. I even scribbled down little notes about something museum and I never drew in. in. So that's my drawing of a salad. Ha ha. This is a couple of weeks later at my mom's house in Van Cleef, Mississippi. And there was a beautiful oak tree in the road where I went running. I know that does not look like an oak tree. It doesn't have to. Uh, this was a floor rubbing in a church. The only paper I had on me was this cheap brochure, so I took it out and used it. Uh, the, here, I went hiking in Tennessee, and as you can see, I never added my words. And I still don't know whether I should go back and add them or let the fact that I didn't be the story. Ah. When I got back to Wales, I went to Cardiff to go foraging for things to make homemade ink with. And I wrote about it, and then I added some mark making with the homemade ink later. 
and just drew a little border around to make it hold together. Dog sitting, New Year's Eve. And again, you can see that the whole thing has splotched tea stains that I just drew right over. This is another example of where I've used a pocket. This was, um, I think postcards came in this pocket. So I just glued it down, added my postcards, and then made a little collage over it to kind of make it less boring. And this is just from a shopping bag and a brochure. And then a nap, this is a napkin that came with the, the water. This, again, if you can't draw, there is no drawing involved in this, this layout here. This, this is from some butter, but it's French butter, okay? So I just uh, opened up the cardboard container and added my text. So, and here's another pocket with ticket stubs and bits of a brochure. And yet another page that I didn't draw. When I got home, I added some stenciling to make it pretty. I added a border. This is a little bit of a list, tea bag. And this was from a bag that our croissants came in. And I just added a little water soluble pencil that I had with me and made it pretty. And that is the most of it. I tend to get distracted towards the end. If you, uh, if you like travel journals or illustrated journals or art journals, whatnot, please subscribe to my channel. I post every Friday. I also have a book and paper newsletter, and you can subscribe to that down below here in the text. Until next Friday, happy making.